that, we move on to the second panel discussion of the summit titled Smart Cities 4.0, Smartness Meets Sustainability. The purpose of the Smart Cities mission is to drive economic growth and improve the quality of life of people by enabling local area development and harnessing technology, especially technology that is smart. Making a city smart encapsulates learnings from the Smart Cities mission to outline the what, why, and how of a small, uh, smart city. It is structured as a workbook with tasks in each section to help cities chart out their own smart city journeys. And first up, I'd like to welcome on stage the moderator for this panel, Amit Oturkar, partner at KPMG. Kindly put your hands together for Amit as he makes his way up. And I'd like to invite the two members of this panel, Sanjay Kolte, CEO, Pune Smart City Development Corporation. Kindly put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, for Sanjay. And Shekhar Singh, Commissioner, come CEO, Pimpri Chinchwad Smart City. Welcome, Shekhar. Thank you for your applause. Amit, over to you. Thank you, everyone. I'm back on stage. So, um, really honored, you know, here um, to have the Honorable PCMC Commissioner Shikhar Singh, and who's also the CEO of the uh, PCMC Smart City, and also Kolte Sir, who is the CEO of the Pune Smart City. So before we begin our discussion, I just want to take a couple of minutes to demystify Smart City. I know you guys have been reading a lot in the paper about it. There's been you know, positive, negative, a lot of different thoughts. So what were Smart Cities? Smart Cities mission was a pilot. It was divided into two parts. One was picking up a small area and trying to do some developments over there. It was trying to basically play around and experiment what really works and then seeing what are the learning lessons. It's a journey. And then the second part was about you know, the whole city-wide initiatives. So before we get on to the discussion, you know, I, I would like you to look and understand cities as actually a living organism. A living organism is very complex, right? It's not a simple process thing. It's, it's more difficult than that. There are too many factors playing. And what these gentlemen here deal with every day, I mean, I've personally been a witness to that for the last 22 years in my career, is absolutely something that is not easy. So going by that, um, most of you have seen, you've been, you're from Pune, a lot of you all, you've seen smart cities. And rather than dwelling into smart cities, what, I'd, what we'd like to discuss in front of you today is the sustainability part. And when we say sustainability, we look at it from a few different angles. One is the sustainability from a governance perspective, sustainability from a scalability perspective, sustainability from a resilience perspective, the financial sustainability, and of course the environmental sustainability. So this is what I would like to you know, ask, and my first question is to Mr. Shekhar Singh. So your thoughts in terms of the governance from a sustainability perspective. As uh, Amit very rightly pointed out, I keep getting questions. I joined PCMC about six, seven months back, and we keep getting it in the media. What is so smart about smart city if you have khadde on the roads? What is so smart about smart city if you know roads get flooded in the monsoon? What is so smart about smart city if there are kutre and gai on the streets? Uh, Amit, uh, I couldn't have put it better the way that Amit put it. I think it was a brave step that India took when we decided to go for smart cities. And such sort of a scale up doesn't exist anywhere in the world. Have we reached the final point? Obviously, we have not reached the final point. It was just a beginning. Uh, just to put it in terms of perspective, all the smart cities, you might be well aware, got about 1,000 crore. We formed uh, various uh, initiatives from a governance point of view, as Amit has just asked. They were segregated into various uh, parameters. 
uh, some were simply, uh, you know, something which comes very naturally to Western nations but doesn't come that naturally to us is something as simple as a good pedestrian network. Something as good as a, you know, a cycling plus a network for pedestrians, that is what we did in ABD. But from a more of a governance point of view, what, as Amit pointed out, what it has done, for example, in the case of PCMC, that model of the area-based development that we had in Pimpre Sodagar and Pimpre Nilak created a demand in the city in terms of the governance structure. We've now formulated the all entire pedestrian guidelines into our DP. We've come out with a NMT policy, non-motorized transport policy. And from the pilot that we had in Smart City, now we have a whole structure which is inbuilt into our DP and we are going for DP revision and we are planning to include it into our DP as to how every road needs to be built from a pedestrian friendly point of view, from a, a cyclist friendly point of view. So the multiple layers we can uh, discuss. I keep seeing the timer, so I'm yeah. not very sure how much I need to elaborate. I know this is an unending topic. I mean, there is so much more um, because of the complexities that are there, but well said, sir. Um, Kolte, sir, the next question to you. Now, obviously, you know, Pune has been a leader. Uh, it, was a, it was the first smart city to have actually, in fact, it's been a first on many different counts. Uh, and while these pilots have been done, can you elaborate in terms of the scalability in some of the things that you've achieved? Yes. Uh, Pune being the first round city, several initiatives were pioneered in uh, the city of Pune. Uh, the Integrated Command and Control Center, which is the centralized decision-making hub, uh, since we are talking about governance. So that's, that a forum has been created uh, which communicates for the city administration with all the stakeholder departments, and many layers are getting added to it. Uh, talking uh, data-wise, more than 800 data sets have been uh, aggregated on the uh, Integrated Command and Control Center and the Indian Ar uh, India Urban Data Exchange, which is, uh, which is a platform created by the ministry uh, for all the 100 smart cities. And this will be helpful, th this has been helpful in carrying out the day-to-day -day administration uh, right from disaster management. Like uh, Pune uh, is front runner uh, so far as disaster management is concerned, uh, using the integrated command and control center, flood simulation model, uh, which has been created, has been used for the uh, last since three years and the dam, dam water discharge at the same time, the rainfall. So both these factors are being monitored to simulate the situation as to the flooding that will be occurring in the low-lying areas, the extent of flooding, the buildings that will be affected, the commercial establishment that will be affected, and effective and timely evacuation of uh, the uh, life and property, uh, life is possible uh, by way of uh, these things. Like uh, other department, uh, uh, services from the police department, from the Pune Municipal Corporation, the meteorology department, all these things have been pulled uh, uh, centrally on the integrated command and control center. Uh, talking about scalability again, the smart e-bus project, which was uh, initiated by Smart City SPB with PMPML. Uh, so initially 150 e-buses which were procured has been immensely successful. Now we are upgrading it up to 100, uh, 650 buses in the city. 400 buses are already plying, and by 23, we'll be upscaling it to 650. So that will be one-third fleet of the city will be e-buses. So again, that EV part and sustainability and sustainable mobility that will be achieved by way of the Smart City Initiative. And similarly, many other initiatives like the, on the infrastructure side, road redesign in the EBD area, or uh, the green initiatives, uh, the LED lighting, for example, has been uh, instrumental in the reduction in the energy demand by 60% for the city of Pune. So, and other things, other services can be built upon uh, these, uh, on this background or on these lighthouse projects, as uh, PCMC Commissioner was mentioning. The, the projects ha have created a lighthouse so that the rest of the city development or the urban development perspective can be uh, uh, aligned uh, with the initiative which Smart City Mission has. Uh, uh, laid down in their city. Wonderful, sir. And actually, you know, this this is very important because, you know, the first question that would come to someone's mind is why are we having a government panel in an industry 4.0, you know? And the reason is exactly of the different opportunities that Kolte sir spoke. Uh, very similarly, I know that in PCMC, for example, sir, you, through your auto cluster, have, done, have uh, 
you know, you set up an incubation center. And there is uh, lots that you're doing for the auto industry also. So maybe from that, as well as, you know, the social perspective, because ultimately we are all citizens. So from a social perspective and auto cluster, you know, the incubation, can you shed some light, you know, in terms of those initiatives? Uh, absolutely, Amit. We started this uh, in 2019, incubated uh, incubation center under ages of the smart city. Uh, started off quite well because of the COVID things flagged a bit, but then it's again picking up. The whole motive was that uh, Pune, I don't need to tell this uh, audience, has one of the most uh, dynamic and most uh, dense network of startups anywhere in the country. It's, the data is also there and otherwise colloquially also we keep seeing. So the whole motive was to being able to facilitate, uh, to be able to provide a platform, to be able to provide a mentorship in one some way. We've been successful in some ways. We've you know, a little bit stumbled in some ways. We're trying to correct that thing, trying to provide a platform, trying to get some investors in touch with them, trying to facilitate, provide a space, provide them mentoring, provide them contacts, etc. The whole focus and motive uh, has to be, and uh, uh, again, that would be something that I would like to exhort the industry people or the people from industry here, that smart city has also shown that there are a lot of options and solutions that can be available from the industry side for the problems that the cities face. And increasingly, it is all becoming technology driven. When <clears throat> Mr. Kolte was talking about data, up till before this posting, I was a district collector in Satara. Uh, some of the government data is excellent. For example, census, NFHS4, et cetera, et cetera. But some of the data, more often than not, is garbage in, garbage out. So when the whole world is talking about metadata and big data, et cetera, et cetera, some of the data that we have in government is probably not good enough to even do something on that regard. So that is where it's for the first time through smart city, whether it is, say, smart meters, smart water meters, smart water sensors, smart environment sensors in our STPs, in our WTPs, which is now giving me data which I can't say it's garbage in, garbage out. It is what it is, and I am getting it directly. Now, based on that data, there can be multiple solutions that can be devised. For example, what is the quality of my water coming out of STP? Can I optimize it further? Some startup who can come in and retrofit my STP to make the parameters even better, parameters of water even better. In fact, uh, we both were there in a conference in Goa recently, and uh, Ahmedabad and Bhopal have done a great job in this platform called CIX, where they're calling all these startups in a very, very structured way, and something that PCMC is uh, doing immediately, uh, hitting the ground running trying to float solution, uh, problems and ask for solution from the startups. And then incubate those startups in the sense, fund the initiative. So we would be funding it. So it's a basically a sort of a public procurement model that the Smart City Mission has decided, where I don't need to go through a tendering process. I select the startup based on the solution that it's providing, and the solution that is there, if it's in some financial limit, one or two crore they've decided, which is a good start, I can directly take that solution and onboard. So if so, I'm not wrong, you know, there were two um, uh, expos that were already done in PCMC, you know, with the yeah. same thing. And I think yeah. if I'm not wrong, there were four startups who basically you've taken under your wings. In absolutely. This space. Absolutely. In fact, one of the startups, we are already working with them with the parking solution. So one of our own startups, we've adopted their technology. And now we've implemented that in terms of uh, pay and park of, for, for both off-street and on-street parking, both. In terms of social infrastructure that you talked about, uh, there's a lot of social infrastructure that got developed uh, in the smart city. One of the examples that comes to my mind is the e-classroom initiative, which we initially started in 11, then scaled it up to all 130 schools, which is a total, again, data-centric, AI-driven approach. In fact, to the extent that uh, now we have attendance, which directly comes to me. There's no attendance by the teachers. Uh, a bit of a little bit uh, far stretch, but something that we are still integrating is trying to see the reaction of the audience. For example, you have a camera and how many people are getting bored by what I'm saying, how many people are smiling, which points to the fact that whether they're interested in what I'm saying is something we're trying to gauge from the reaction of the students and give that feedback back to the teacher as to what is the attention span, how many kids are happy, how many kids are sad, how many kids are neutral, how many kids are lost, so that the teacher then gets that data and then it is integrated. So, so I think e-classroom has been uh, hugely successful. Same thing we did with regards to health also, uh, uh, in terms of trying to get the data for the health of the students in the schools. And now we are trying to scale that up. And if I'm not wrong, I think that is IoT-based uh, IoT data. Based. That is Absolutely, IoT-based data. We've already done a POC for that. We'll be soon implementing it, where again, the data I'm not having to record, it is directly coming to my system. And a health report is getting generated for each student 
which I'm now integrated with the academic report of each student also. We are doing it with Quality Council of India, pre-assessment, post-assessment, etc. And at the end of the day, uh, the parent of the student will get this link or in their uh, message box, what is the academic report, what is the health report, what are the problems that the kid has in health, so that we can also follow and that parent can also follow. Wonderful. So government is an industry by itself, as we know. Now, this also means that all these initiatives don't come for free. So how do you look at the financial sustainability of this? So the financial sustainability, as I said, 1,000 crore was what initially was, you could say, a seed capital that was given, out of which uh, we also had a contribution. Uh, government of India had a contribution. Government of Maharashtra had a contribution. So total 1,000 crore. Going forward, there are a lot of monetization efforts that all uh, cities are taking. Uh, we are proud to say that PCMC is the first smart city who has monetized the optical fiber network that we have. So we've created something like 600 kilometers of optical fiber. There is a dark fiber that is available, one of the ducts that we've lit up. There are three ducts which are available to us, which are dark ducts, and now we've uh, uh, monetized it. We are uh, hiring a concessioner to monetize it for us. And that would more or less, a single project would sustain the smart city for all the expenditure that we require, whether it is for the OPEX, whether it is for sustaining of the HR that we require, Apart from that, in terms of the financial sustainability, like uh, uh, we have this application called Smart Sarthi, which is a citizen engage engagement platform through an application website. Already PMC has uh, hired that service from us. Going forward, we are actively going to pitch it to other smart cities and try to make some money out of that uh, so solution. <laughs> so we are already looking at that and then also looking to monetize the VMDs that we have and the kiosks that we have and also monetize our app because we've onboarded a lot of business uh, merchants, etc., operating in the city on our app. We, our app has roughly about two and a half lakh active users. Wonderful. So this is very entrepreneurial that you're, you're going beyond your reel to actually act as an entrepreneur. And I think this is exactly, so you, you are actually acting as a CEO of the city rather than as a commissioner, and which is very, very interesting and very much needed. Thank you so much. PMC, sir. Um, how do you look at the financial sustainability and carrying out, you know, all these scalability measures that you spoke of further into the future? Yes. <clears throat> Pune Smart City is also uh, working for uh, planning for the monetization now. Uh, we have taken, uh, adopted uh, certain cues from uh, PCMC also. Uh, one example was laid by uh, PMC uh, by way of municipal bonds which they uh, floated and uh, raised almost 200 crores for a water 24 by 7 project in 2017-18. Uh, so that is one example within the city itself. So, so th this is a, a model which can be thought of for further uh, requirements of uh, funds which will be required for the SPV or the ULB. Uh, the integrated command and control center, as I said, so we are thinking of using it, the, using the infrastructure there as a service, the data which has been pooled that can be used as a service. At the same time, advertisement revenue is being planned from the VMDs and uh, other uh, street light uh, poles and other things. So we are actively working on uh, preparing a, a plan and execute it for uh, raising the uh, revenue uh, from uh, all these uh, sources. Uh, we may also go ahead uh, with the ducting which we have uh, established in the road redesign works in the ABD area. So that ducts, uh, we are again planning to monetize it by hiring it for various services like water, the gas, and um, telecommunication, and other things. Thank Amit, you. Thank I'll you. quickly add to what sure. Mr. Kolte says, because the industry is present, I think it would be important. Uh, what he mentioned is a very important point about municipal bond, and Pune started it in 2017. After that, about 11 cities have come out. We are coming out with a municipal bond for a riverfront development project in March. Indore just yesterday issued a municipal bond, first green bond of India. We are coming up with another green bond for the uh, cycling network. So it's a project called Harit Setu that we are coming up. But next three to four months, we would be coming out with a green bond. The problem that is happening and what I would uh, like to exhort all of you is that if you say US, US is a almost $3 trillion municipal bond market. Mm -hmm. The entire infrastructure that you see in cities in US is funded primarily through municipal bond market. And one of the major stakeholders are industries operating in those local areas. Now you might feel or you might not feel a part of the city. You might feel that why to invest in this municipal bond. But overall, the way that industries see it in the other parts of the world, they feel that if they are being a part of the municipal bond, they are 
taking part in the development of the city because it's a symbiotic relationship and no one knows it better than PCMC. PCMC and industry share a long history of symbiotic relationship as far as the growth of the city is concerned or the growth of the industry is concerned and it goes hand in hand. If I have good infrastructure, your clients are happy. If you have good infrastructure, your industry would grow more. So I would really exhort industry in general also to become a stakeholder, a part in the municipal bond if it has to go really. So I'd like to, you know, with your permission also, you know, actually exert this a little further. Um, I have seen, you know, uh, working of the government at the central state and uh, ULB, even the Zilla Parishad level. And trust me, um, I've seen that in India, I've seen it abroad. The difference is in terms of ownership. What is the ownership we as citizens take towards any of this? Now, when you have, you know, two the CXOs, as you would call, of the government side sitting in front of the industry over here, and they're inviting you, it's not only a business opportunity, but it's also a citizen opportunity for you to approach, take ownership, and nothing comes for free. So I'm sure there is a business case. And if, if there is a valid proposition, people are open. I think times are changing. So my request is, Take this opportunity as Industry 4.0 to really, really come, approach, and work with these CXOs that you guys have probably been shying away with. Just to clarify, I'm not soliciting anything for my bond, so I <laughs> hope I don't flout heavy guidelines. I was just generally saying about municipal bonds in India. No, agreed. So we are almost up there. Um, so you know, if we can take a couple of questions, and I guess the time should be up. Yes, sir. Please. Uh, my name is S.P. Mohindra. I'm living in Nigri Prajikam area, and I'm so happy at 7 o'clock uh, when the vehicle comes with uh, India signals, India great, like that, and they, then they take the garbage out. It gives a very good message. All the Prajikam area is being cleaned by that. Now, the basic thing what I'm saying, you are saying we are first in uh, all India, but I have some doubts. Many other cities are again uh, further to us but my main aim is that uh, people are not knowing uh, in smart city what you are going to do i am having all the newspapers i read the papers but i am come come to know here only now the major factors for example uh, metro is coming up to nigri in ravet you know we have made uh, made arrangement to connect national highway one you know farmer has stopped all the action why not to advertise and let the people know that one farmer is not giving the space and the whole project is held up. So many other problems which you know are there, you should announce you know in smart city what you are going to do so that people also ask you whether you have done it or not. We are so happy and we are living in this area and we are proud that Pune is one of the best cities but I think advertisement also is required so that we also ask to uh, tell you whether sir, you have done or not. Sir, first a clarification, I never said we are number one city. Just I just said, no, I just said in we monetization, we are the first city to monetize in India. That's all. So I'm not claiming that we are the best city or first city, not at all. But Even in, start, in start, it was told, we are pioneers in many areas. In the ah, start, that, that we are. Yes. That I claim, that but PCMC has been pioneer in many areas. But in which you are area? absolutely correct. Uh, I think there is a need for a further, more deeper citizen engagement. I've started it in some sense. We had to stop because of the MCC currently. But I couldn't agree more with you. Uh, and that my, I myself have felt because that when I started with saying that smart city is where garbage ka problem is smart city. Hai, that is what it emanates from. Uh, point absolutely well taken, something that I'm myself working on it. Sir, what is going to happen? You should know people. Absolutely, I totally agree. Totally agree. If you tell people that in a year, two years, three years, people will be happy. Metro Sir, can I, can I add? So, um, I was a consultant to PCMC, you know, before Shekhar sir uh, became the commissioner. And I know that it's built into the program. So, we ourselves did road shows, you know, in terms of what the smart city proposal was, what the plan is. Not only that, by the mandate of the smart city's mission, it is required that every three months a citizen forum is held and everyone is invited. Now there is an actual, so this has been put out several times in papers on PCMC's website inviting. There is a large group that does come in. Sir, everyone is invited. Just to also give an example, and uh, but I totally support what you're saying. I think we need to uh, engage more. 
to try to make them understand what you know we are basically trying to do. But as a small example, when I talked about the pedestrian network, when I talked about the streetscaping, urbanscaping, that entire design was thrown open for the citizens to comment. And we got literally 550 suggestions. Yes. That might not look very big in a population of 25 lakh, but those 550 suggestions were good quality suggestions which helped us fine tune our design for this entire streetscaping, urbanscaping. And that is the reason why we could involve all those inputs and now have it in our DP also as a finalized sort of a frozen thing, which is a common uh, template for the whole city. One last question. Yes, sir. Request if you could introduce yourself, please. This is Ravindri Hair. Good evening, uh, sir. Uh, as far as uh, smart cities are concerned, the major challenge being the parkings and, and the sanitation, uh, which, which plays a key role. So I would like to share, you know, there are a couple of solutions available as far as vertical parking is concerned. And uh, in the sanitization space, there are toilets being developed, which is United Nations are declared as one of the top 10 innovations. I would share that details with you once we, you know, are through. Probably that could help uh, our twin cities, you know, uh, address these challenges. Thank you. So a quick just, uh, not a response, uh, would invitation for you to also visit our smart toilet at Dange Chowk, at Bhakti Shakti. Sure. Uh, those are the two smart toilets that we've uh, prepared, built till now, almost seven, eight are already operational. Okay. It is absolute state of the art, first time in India that a total toilet is smart and the good thing about it is, it's easy to create a smart solution, but how to sustain it, what Absolutely. Amit was asking. Absolutely. So we've uh, attached these toilets with a restaurant or a showroom. So we've given the space, mm -hmm. and it is that person's responsibility to take care of it. It's a PPP model. I have not spent a single penny on the CAPEX part, but the whole OPEX part is being looked after it, and for 15 years, that revenue would be generated to do that. The one I'm talking about is uh, European... Uh, yeah, yeah, so we'll share that. Thank you. All right, I think we have, we have already five minutes... Uh, post our time. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Shekhar, sir. Thank you, Kulti, sir. Thank you.